All right, we are live on Twitch. Yeah. We are live on Twitch. Yeah. I'm not seeing it up yet. There we go. Yep. Do we have audio too? Is it not going through? Oh, there was audio. I heard myself. Am I coming through fine? I'm hearing you, yep. Then, welcome. You want to take it away, Roden? Yep, we'll do it. Alright, guys. Uh, hello there, hello. Good evening, good morning, wherever you may be. Uh, I'm Roden, and we're here to uh, present the Blue Horseshoe Club podcast. Uh, technically, not a new podcast. It's been a around for a while. This is technically what, if you were to... Countdown from the beginning is what, number five? Something like that, right? Um, but again, I'm Rodin. Um, you usually see me from uh, my other stream doing uh, station trading, but I'm here uh, with uh, some more market savvy players, much more so than myself. Um, they're going to have a chance to introduce themselves here, but this is a podcast about EVE Online. It's current events, meta news, player happenings but also a great leaning on market items. All right, so that's me, and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, give an opportunity for our other folks here to introduce themselves. We'll go with uh, Caleb. Hey guys, I'm Caleb. I am uh, the official uh, founder of the SCC Lounge. Some of you might uh, remember that and be using that already. Uh, I have recently started rolling out the Eve Guardian with the Eve NT. So it's kind of obvious that I would end up working with Roden because he's also on the EVENT team now. So we decided that uh, we were going to uh, relaunch the project that uh, Lockbox was very hot on uh, getting off the ground, the idea of uh, an actual market-focused uh, uh, podcast. So uh, this is episode one and the soft launch. So it's basically number two. There's been a, a few attempts to uh, start rolling it out, but uh, this is uh, the first official uh, version and uh, we hope that we can develop this uh, with the audience uh, as time goes by. All right, great. Uh, not hopeful. And uh, how about next one we have here is uh, Jeronica. I think Jeronica is shooting someone in Rust right now. Oh so man, Rust so good. No, Rust so good. All right, that's that's fine. That's fine. But we'll go ahead and carry on with the with our thing here. The main thing we want to talk about, guys, is the the monthly economic report. Uh, man, this has been like the, oddly enough, this is, I can't remember the last time anything, market anything, was actually this, was in the spotlight for this long. Um, from my perspective, as a, you know, really small time trader, you know, um, the monthly economic report doesn't really mean a whole lot to me, you know, uh, besides some key features in there, or key items, but in general, it's, it doesn't affect me much. I uh, Caleb, I know you know you're uh, more of a bigger picture kind of guy. Can you explain to our uh, viewers here kind of what's the what's the value of the monthly economic report and how does that actually affect uh, the players in the game? Well, personally, I'm a little bit critical of uh, the way and the form uh, the current uh, monthly economic report is is created. Uh, I was more a fan of uh, the old version that was the quarterly one that uh, Dr. Eric was. Uh, uh, launching every quarter well when it actually came out on time which was very rare but the point is that when you have these economic reports you're getting uh, a lot of data that you can just bite into and and do all your prognosis and do all your calculations on what are you going to put your investments into what are you going to try and uh, corner or what are you going to try and manipulate uh, what's the meaning of uh, the general ecosystem? Uh, what ships are going to go up in price? And it, it's a fuck ton of information. And it's also going to play a lot into uh, political movement, like uh, which groups and which regions are benefiting the most, are being the most productive. Uh, 
what can you expect there? Uh, super uh, cash pool to actually be growing with and things like that. It's like how how strong is the entities in the entirety of Eve, which is also what brings on the whole controversy right now because when Quant took over, he changed the the, the format of uh, the monthly economic report. Um, first of all, of course, he changed the cadence to be pretty much every month when it comes out in time. Same problems as in the past. <laughs> but uh, the thing is that, that, that some of the numbers we're getting are uh, basically more transparent and we're getting more access to, to details that we can crunch and get even more geopolitical uh, advantage. This is what then brought on the whole debacle with Aerith bringing it to the CSM saying, can we maybe get some form of fog of war or some form of obfuscation in there so people can't basically just click every month saying, oh, goons have made this much money exactly to the fucking isk cent. Well, <laughs> maybe not exactly because there's a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of flaws in the monthly economic report. Uh, small things that it's not been uh, calculating, like that it didn't count the drones and it didn't show stuff in citadels and well, many small issues like that. But on a general term, it, it did actually give too much information um, that could be abused strategically. And I can understand why Aerith brought it up. Um, but on the other hand, it is important to have this type of information if we are to do any of the things that basically tries and sells these big narratives of what is the unique selling point of Eve, because Eve is, is nothing without its complicated economy and its complicated ecosystem of creation and destruction. Then it's just like World of Warcraft or any other game. That's true. I mean, so right now, you know, uh, given the scope of that information, does it, does it take uh, the backing of big alliances and coalitions to actually even do anything with that information. It sounds like it's, it's, it's like it's like a 10,000 foot view and you really got to be at that view to, to do anything with it. Well, if, if I know exactly how much you and your group is mining and how much you're trading or how much you're moving from one system to another, I basically know exactly what I'm dealing with. I can't know exactly your compositions of your doctrines and shit like that nothing like that or, or the quality of your pilots but you know the financial backing of it and i think that's why goons brought it up because in my personal opinion and i know i might be a little bit biased but to me it looks as if goons are the only ones that take these things serious to most other entities it's like mm, why would you care it's not important well it is important if 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 you pay attention to how can you stage and recuperate from wars? What's your size of your war chest? How long is it going to last? How much of uh, the rest of, uh, of the EVE universe can you actually tank if they start attacking you like we saw in the, the casino wars, right? Yeah, so would you say that this is... If you're actually playing EVE to build empires, you got to know this stuff. And if you're not in it, then you're just, you're just going to be there blind, right? Yeah, it's not so, so much only about being blind it's more like uh, if you if you do not measure this if, if you do not take your budgets serious if you do not uh, consider your man hours your payments and, and compensation for man hours uh, your uh, actual uh, overheads your your turnover how much money are you really bringing in how much how, how much assets are you bringing in how fast can you start pushing out a new doctrine like we already know that uh, uh, goons have been getting a hard on for uh, carriers, right? And how how fast are they going to be able to say shift into this doctrine, which is a little bit more skill heavy, to, to say the least, right? And and of course it's a lot more well expensive in what you have to do man hours wise, because if they then want to do that with full SRP and have like 250 carriers in in each fleet, it's like a little bit crazy, right? Because I'm from the old days when carriers was something that everyone just dreamed about actually flying. Now it's like supers and carriers and titans for everyone, right? But this is the new meta, right, in, in the doctrine. And you need to know how fast you can churn them out, what are the costs, all these things. And what if you have to take on NC and PL at the same time? How much loss are you going to be able to recuperate and things like that? It's just it's just the math, right? It's like, it's like when we make jokes with new traders that come in and it's like, if you mine it, it's free. <laughs> no, it's fucking not. 
Nope. <laughs> that shit ain't free. Yeah, I mean, First it's fucking crazy. fucking rule of trading, opportunity cost. If you're wasting your money in a fucking shit item that... I know I'm addicted to meta, but that's... I'm the same, man. But that's so much of that shit. I've been training them for fucking ever. So <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like running home to mama. It's like, I should really not be spending any time looking at that shit because it's fucking small beans, right? I just do it for habit. So it's still in my fucking quick list. I still like buying it. I still like stocking it. But it's also fun because then you get things like someone coming in and trying to manipulate a market like that, trying to corner all uh, uh, in a specific meta uh, module, taking the price to 10 or 15 or 20 times the price. And I can just sit there and just trickle feed them forever because I have like a hundred thousand or more of each of these items, right? Yeah. So in in some fashion or another, the the economic report now the periodicity has has changed. You know, as as you've said earlier, um, did it take someone like Aerith being in the CSM to actually bring some of that stuff to the forefront? Because until then, I don't ever recall anyone ever saying anything about the economic reports. Well. I now, I can't remember exactly how long we've had the, the quad version, but it's not really that long. Um, so if I go back and say, when did they last have a CSM member that really took these things serious? It would have been someone like Mina, right? Um, yeah, old school. Aside old from school. that, it's, it's very difficult to, to get a popular vote as a, a meta player or a market player. It is the, it, you have to get in on a block vote, and if the blocks uh, don't really have anyone seriously in this uh, range? Well, the closest you get that I can remember just on the top of my head, right? It's it's someone like Solon that's actually a little bit more serious about these things and overall balance with uh, the game's design and ecosystem. Not that I necessarily agree with him, but he at least cares about it enough. So if he had been in the meeting, he might actually have said, oh, wait a minute, that that's a topic that I have something to say about, but the majority didn't really respond. Hmm. Now, does it, no, it is. Uh, uh, the items there are universal values, right? Um, is it is it really universal? Does it actually affect worm holders as well? Because that, that's one of the things that you know I'm, I've been in some capacity or another. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm I'm not a mainstream player. You know, market guy, low stack guy, wormhole guy. As a wormhole guy, even actually, I actually do wormhole industry. I feel so insulated from that kind of stuff. So I'm I'm not sure if I'm if I'm assessing that properly or I'm kind of just not really seeing the meta as well from my vantage point. Well, I don't think we, uh, from uh, uh, the economic report, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we don't actually see anything from uh, the wormholes directly. So we only see it indirectly when it's actually moving. And that brings on the whole thing with uh, uh, the import export uh, calculations in, in the MER, which is a little bit complicated because you have to figure out, because it calculates everything, right? It, everything that moves uh, from location to location, it calculates the total value. So you have to do a little bit of math and crunching and figure out whether it's net or uh, importer or exporter and uh, calculate and compensate for things like destruction and, and production because, it, well, basically it's, if, if you have a fleet that's moving from goon space out of goon space, it's basically going to count as stuff being Oh, lots how much there. of it has been destroyed that's going to be counted the other way so now you can actually indirectly figure out how much has actually been lost when they flew out but then these numbers are of course not specific they're uh, regionally so it, it's not the easiest thing to sit there and, and crunch yourself but uh, if you've had years to prepare and you have a team of uh, financially savvy guys like they do in goons pretty much standard you just put it in the fucking machine and just crunch the numbers and you get the fucking answers you need. And oh, that's I'm some swearing like crazy. So yeah. I'm, I'm more we're good. Um, is that so just to make sure so we're all clear on kind of how to see that from the report. Um, is that something that you will look under trade balance by region? Yeah. Okay, great. So if I, someone's I, I don't moving... want to go through the uh, meticulously through the monthly economic report, there's plenty of stuff out there on how to actually figure these things out and there's been a lot of articles coming out and there's actually sites that do this so mm, yeah um, true. and if you are in doubt you can always uh, uh join comfy and see if you can get a spy into the financial branch <laughs> that's true that's true it's crazy so um i mean as a trader i wasn't too butthurt about what eric was saying or proposing you know because it's 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 beyond my scope 
but is that something that I should be aware of if I am living in Nullsec and I am a trader in Nullsec? Is that something I should really be keen on? I, I, I don't really know if you can look at it like that. I think I think what you should be uh, paying attention to is the fact that uh, goons want to hide this data or at least claim they wanted to hide it. Um, and you should ask yourself why. Uh, if there is not uh, what you would call player oversight, because, well, of course, CCP will have oversight and know exactly what's going on. But historically, it takes them a long time to figure out when there's, say, in a uh, a way to abuse the system or pretty much break it. Uh, whether you're talking about things like uh, 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 infinite reactions uh, when doing moon goo or things like that, right? It, it's like, and it took an, an age to get rid of gun mining and stuff like that. It's just, if, if the players do not point out these mistakes or balance issues, most likely nothing is going to change. It's what goons are doing that's a little bit funny. They're basically claiming that uh, well, they are claiming that they are doing quality assurance for CCP by breaking the game so that things can be fixed and changed before it breaks the entire game, right? Uh, they've said that before and it's kind of like, like, I don't know, it, it's almost sarcastic, but at the same time, it's like, I can kind of, I can kind of see that. I can kind of see that. But, you know, that's like putting yourself above the developers, right? That's really, it's putting your, that I have more vision and ability to understand your game versus you as the developer. That's, that's crazy. The, the, I think Eric, uh, no, not Eric, sorry, Quant um, on Talking in Stations pretty much admitted that sometimes, a lot, a lot of times, handing out these things to players, they're going to do a better job at figuring out what's wrong. Both because of, as I think I mentioned, the, the whole wisdom of the crowd, the fact that so many eyes on it, but it's also the fact that there is actually so many skilled players in EVE that are on par with, if not even beyond the skill set of most CCP devs, because many of them, it's their day job, right? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, that's, 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 that is pretty cool, you know what I mean? But at the same time, that's... I, I don't know if I if I'm you know like a like a legitimate new player and I'm hearing all these like really high level meta stuff right, and what I'm capturing from this is the developers don't know their game. I don't know if I'm gonna feel comfortable continuing to play a game if the developers don't know their game. But they can't know all of it, right? It's it's why it's so important that they are so good at actually talking to the players. Eve is very special because everything that we do matter it's not like any other game in in most i don't think i know a single game where there's actual historicity and actual proper ecosystems that generate things that matters to the player every single day in eve that's just the whole idea of the game so they need to 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 ask the players how are things progressing is something too easy is something too hard how can we fix this? Like, I think it's ironic that, uh, okay, I know that scanning has been fixed a lot of times, but it's still not very easy to get into as a new player, right? Whereas getting access to fucking minerals now with anomalies is like a click of a button just outside your window, like having your own little process thing and you never need to leave null. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Um, so we got the so we got the report. We got folks that are looking at it from a from a you know empire building point of view. Then you got kind of low level marketeer guys like myself. But then you have like another group of players in there that that really work in the shadows. You know, like the analysts, right? The guys who crunch the numbers, draw the data, make the graphs, and actually present it in a, in a digestible form. Um, from what I have seen from kind of the the response from those changes and what Aris said, it was a lot of basically negative sentiments towards the, the whole idea of reducing the visibility of the information. Like, what do you, what do you think about that? Because they're kind of, you know, they're kind of part of that whole ecosystem as well, right? The, the presenters of information to the general public. Yeah, pretty much. I'd like to say before we, we go down that rabbit hole that we are having an open mic tonight. So if, if anyone in chat wants to come in and, and, and say their piece on any of these topics or ask questions, feel free.
free to to join. I will link uh, the Discord in the channel. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's one of those just open mic nights, you know. <laughs> But yeah, uh, the, the thing that's funny about um, things like this when you talk about the, the big game, because it's not only the big game, and many of these things have been used for content creation by, well, what to goons might seem like small potato, right? But you've had uh, all this development in the meta market or financial product, uh, playing with things and acting like active uh, professional traders in the game. And, and this can be done on any level. It's just like playing poker. Uh, sure, you can do something where the buy-in is a million, or you can play poker where the buy-in and the blinds are next to nothing and just uh, pennies that uh, friends do every day, right? But that doesn't mean that the game is different. The game is the same, it's just the scale. Yeah, it's just like... I don't know, I mean... I wanna. I don't. I don't think there's really a good enough balancing point for, for the entire like data ecosystem. You know, so, someone's gonna get the short stick. I'm not. Who's, who's, I don't know who's getting the short stick right now, but someone's getting it. Yeah, and it's it's about the things like um, CCP has not really um, kept their eye on the economy and the ecology. Well, personally, I think since like. 2008, 2009, and they've been benefiting from all those big stories in the Financial Times and uh, professional uh, economists commenting on EVE as the best virtual economy and all that hype they've been banking on, right? But they've not really developed for us, which is why it was so uh, good for me to see that uh, finally someone like Quant uh, and a few of the other devs us, uh, are considering putting a little bit more into the game and maybe finishing some of the things that were never actually finished even though you can go back to day one and the intention was clear it was just that they couldn't really implement it because well i don't know how many uh, uh, in in the chat actually tried to play eve in 2003 to 2005 but it was like horrible and there was patch uh, emergency patchings and and server crashes and rollbacks and shit like that like pretty much every fucking week, right? The We were killing the servers. It was too popular, there was too much going on, and they had to tone things down. Things that they would have liked to have couldn't really be implemented. Mm, yeah. But now it's fucking easy. Right? It's, uh, the servers today are so powerful that this is not an issue. Something like massive sized databases is not really an issue for modern hardware. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We'll see. I mean, I'm looking forward to, you know, the develop. It seems like we definitely have more tools now to assist with grand civilization building in space. But at the same time, it seems like it's still really the same players playing it at that level. I don't like uh, term levels. It's like if, if I'm uh, investing and... and, and market work uh, is being done for a group of 500 players. It's a lot more than most uh, even rich players handle. Uh, if I'm doing that for a thousand players, 5,000 players, or even 10,000 players, you're on a different scale, but you're still doing some of the same things. It's pretty much exactly the same thing. It's just that you can now dominate markets if you want to. You can speculate on a whole different range. You're going to make so much more money when you you basically uh, go in and say, okay, what's the next big thing that CCP will fix? Because there is a God in this machine. This is not just emergent gameplay or natural uh, evolution. This is pretty much hard controlled by CCP, pretty much everything. Yeah, that's true. Is there any other pieces of information in the MER you think uh, should be added based on how on the latest iteration of it? I, I, I don't think I would add much more. I might want to present it in a, in a better way, and I might want, or if, I, I'd, I'd like to get someone like Quant to say, okay, we, we're going to sit down and, and explain some of these examples so it's not this barrier of entry for new players that they have to go and scrape the entire internet for EVE-related uh, commentary and analysis of, uh, of these things. Uh, 
uh, I think that would make it a little bit more fun and, and more likely that we might get more people playing this weird game. Uh, for those who have the tech savvy and knowledge to do so, is it possible for them to develop something like the MER on their own using endpoints? Yes, almost, but technically not <laughs> not, not the detailed uh, geographical uh, information. I don't think that. I think the closest you get is someone like uh, Adam for Eve is is doing some mm, yeah, yeah. Nice number crunching and he's he's got some some ways of of, uh, of scraping that uh, data to to get some very in, uh, interesting information but uh, it there's holes in his stuff because he's not uh, doing it to everything and yeah limited by programmer time and server gotcha, so, gotcha. now looking hello. oh yeah my... hello um I just wanted to talk about that. Just go back to that econ report. You were talking about the MER. You preferred the old version. Why? I like the the fact that there was uh, comments. I like the fact that um, there was a voice behind it, so it felt like actually reading a report and not just getting a stack of data. Do you think that they did a better job than players in the analysis? No, but uh, in an era where player activity and player content was not pushed forward it didn't really reach an, in my opinion enough players uh, it was a niche thing it was a, it's the same discussion when we talk about things like voting for the CSM right it's yeah. just access it's not it's not easy to figure out that these things are going on and and that there is this whole niche of the game where you can go and read these things and read players uh, analysis of, of, of the numbers I think now we might be at a point where players could take over if ccp decides to do like when they bring people like lock fox on the 07 show or push out uh articles directly in their tweets and things like that but it's still not inclined enough for me i think it, it needs to be more accessible it's the same as uh, they've done all those uh, um, tutorial videos and they were supposed to also do it for the markets they didn't get around to doing that I'm not sure I agree with that because I think players that are interested in the market and that are interested in finance will be self-motivated enough to go out and find forums and the resources they need. That's kind of suggesting that they need to be spoon-fed in game when they probably don't. No, but are you sure that all of that information is easily accessible when you have things like uh, the wiki dying and projects uh, falling apart, b not being there anymore, uh, VV not being around anymore, uh, Hex not being around anymore. All these projects fall apart, apart right? And, and a lot of yeah. information is in that. And then you have things like how far back do you actually have to go and search in the forums to find interesting uh, things that contain exactly the data that you want to look at, whether you're looking at uh, someone saying, okay, I'm going to list all of the historical IPOs ever launched in the MD. There is a post like that. It's not up yeah, to date, it. but remember it's very it. fucking difficult to find it if you're a new player. And I just think that's a headache that I really think they shouldn't have. It's why I got a little bit angry when they discontinued the wiki, because that could have been somewhere where you could put that information and it would not fucking be disappearing. Are you suggesting then an alternative might be something similar to the e-fiction portal where these resources are gathered and put somewhere I'm accessible. suggesting remaking the wiki uh, in a proper way where you can lock in easily with the SSO, where the information that's actually in the wiki is used directly in the client through some sort of uh, accept thing in the Q&A, and then it just gets pushed to the servers, right? And when you click things in-game, those links push you out into the wiki where you can then read the players comments and versions i think it's a lazy mode of pu uh, pulling it out of the game and not uh, continuing it because i okay you have eve wiki right uh, uh, sorry eve university's wiki and you have goon wiki but what if eve university doesn't actually keep up to date with things like let's say markets or in the case of of some of the stuff you can get when you're in goon some of that's magical details right but it's not available for everyone. That's just wrong. Well, is there enough? Uh, does does the market draw enough players, new new players specifically, for it to, for us to continue to have a dedicated development plan for that side of the game versus the more traditional? 
kind of like combat exploration PVE type stuff. I don't know if Marsha wants to comment on that. <laughs> Sorry. I... Sorry, I was just reading something in chat. No. Um, I mean, to be fair, today I went on to MD because I saw that IPO that you linked um, for somebody in SCC. And I had a quick look through MD and I was like, where have all the stickies gone for a start? There should be a sticky at the top of the... Uh, just some resources and where There's to go. Nothing in... it, it, and it, and it's yeah. gone. And then... it, it ties into the fact that I, I think there might be someone responsible uh, for for that forum, but no one that has an interest in it. And that's yeah. kind of tragic because that means that nothing serious or important gets sticky. Uh, there's no sorting or uh, fixing anything until it gets reported. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's a ghost town, really. It's, I remember about two years ago, I posted on Reddit, um before i deleted my reddit account because i got bored of it but i was talking to somebody and he was like well i look on md and i don't really understand it because they're all just scams or people asking for money and i said what's well, it's, it's because you don't know how to read the forum because you've not been on there long enough you haven't got to know the people you need to actually speak to the people join channels that they're in and actually understand the subtext of what they're posting and it, he, di he didn't get it and this was a long-term player and i think he was in goomswarm actually when i said it to him and i thought well if he doesn't get it, and he's been playing for quite a few years, then how is a new player supposed to get it? And like, I, I very first came in and went into MD, and that was my most active forum for like my first two years. So obviously I knew it, and I went back and back read it. But this now- is exactly what I mean when I say that we've lost people like Wraith, that was also a female actually, um, very successful in MD and meta markets, was one of the uh, directors in eBank before it failed. Uh, we've lost people like Shah Tigral that actually used to run the Eve Guardian, was very active as an uh, auditor in the MD. Uh, we've lost people like Hex that used to uh, do his entire uh, IPO business plan guide. Um, we've lost uh, VV that was explaining things like Lockfox has been doing, but a little bit more focused on the deep technical analysis and alchemy and and magician like uh trading um and and when you lose these personalities then that con that content goes away it, it's no longer available and if ccp has not vaulted it in any shape or form it's lost well that's one of the like kind of natural barriers to that type of gameplay though isn't it because you know there isn't a part of a game of the game that i've experienced that's as uh there's a genuine social barrier to the markets. And when you're telling a new player that, that sounds like, what do you mean? There's a social barrier, it's markets, it's numbers, it's buying stuff, it's selling stuff. Well, what's people got to do with it? And it's like, it is people, market is people, <laughs> you know? Yeah, but it, it's, a, it's a meta. Right? Yeah, it's yeah, meta. exactly, just exactly. Like, just like doctrines are, just like uh, regional benefits and analysis of what regions have, what stuff or what uh, uh, distribution of gates, how, uh, where are the bottlenecks? How can you get caught? Uh, which systems do you have to be careful in? All these things, the, these things are emergent. It's something that we figure out, we learn, we share, and it because it keeps staying relevant and because someone is always handing that information over, it's not forgotten. And that means that you don't have the, uh, the fallout that you do in the market stuff because that information is usually bound on solo projects the rest is vaulted in the organizations and never get out. So all the stuff that, that might be going on in the MD to introduce new players to all this stuff, most likely a lot of it is inside uh, PL, NC and Goons and big organizations like that. So you don't have to actually go and do and use the public office, right? You don't have to do it and learn from them. You can just learn it in, in house. But if you are not inclined to join those organizations, you will never touch that information. Do you think, because I find this kind of strange, it's like, uh, so I, you know, I do trading stuff, market stuff, right? Uh, but I'm actually fairly well connected socially with a lot of players, but we're not necessarily in the same corporation, alliance, coalition, or anything like that. If there was and that's an, the difference. Yes, yeah, exactly. So would it be, you think it will be beneficial to improve this part of the game if there were tangible benefits to doing cooperative market stuff if you're actually in the same in-game type of group well of course but i don't think 
that I would like to do that because that's like going backwards. That's like going back to Templar banking or going back to early American banking where every bank could print their own, own money and going back to uh, bonds that you carry in a briefcase and shit like that. That's not really where I want the game to go. I want it to go in the other direction to give us these things in the right order so we can mature this part of the game so we are not dependent on doing gangster warfare, which is what I see Eve being still. It's very uh, feudal, it's very uh, gangster-like, it's very uh, racketeering-oriented. Uh, the capitalist aspects are not in play because it's still niche. I'm not sure that I agree with that definition because on the MD side, everything was sort of, it revolved around reputation, reputation farming and maintaining a reputation. So in that sense, you were rewarded for good behavior. Um, until not you bad. cash out. Un until you cash out. Yeah. But I mean, when you were saying about um, creating groups, that is a special interest group, but it already exists. Like MD is a special interest group. So is SCC Lounge, if you think about it. I mean, you created that and it's cross-platform because it reaches across different alliances. The problem that you've had over the years is that people like Goons and PL don't need to play outside their own groups. They've got their own ties. So the very, very high level, well-established players with a lot of ISK that are in null sec don't actually need to participate if they don't want to. Pretty much exactly. And I don't disagree at all. I'm just saying that the it would be easier to do these things and see a natural growth and a more what you would call honorable uh, behavior between all these banksters instead of ending up like fraudsters they would stay in the game and start behaving as people do in real life when they handle big finance right and financial products i'm not asking for futures or uh crazy contracts for difference or uh swap uh, options or anything like that. That's not what I'm asking for at all. I would just like at least a functional stock function, right? At least having shares would be really nice. Having the ability to send someone a bill that they can then send back an acknowledgement of. So you say, okay, yes, I will pay this bill at this due date that you gave me, right? And if I don't, it goes in a, in a group of, of bills that says these are <laughs> bad uh, creditors, right? These people are not paying. And then I can act upon that in some form. These fundamentals were meant to be in the game, but they never actually got finished. It, it's so clear if you look at the, at, at the features and functionalities we have, you can see that originally this was intended to be tweaked and improved eventually. Well, as far as... I mean, do we are, are we really at that point where we can actually just do that? I mean, is there a lot of... Um, I imagine there's a lot of back-end stuff that happens, though. No, uh, players send you bills, right? Uh, sorry, NPCs send you bills for renting mm -hmm. stuff. So that already exists. That mm, function is there. It's just that I can't then create a similar one and send it to someone and then get the same receipt and the same entry in my budget. But you know that footnote that was put into the economics report that everybody seized on and they took it as futures and trading in uh, it like sort of quite an esoteric level of trading i thought it was something a lot simpler that was just contracts for loans <laughs> with a fixed term that... it was yeah, that's the whole point it, yeah, it, but... it's just a collateralized loan yeah, yeah coll just that but... quant was putting in the joke and uh, i think people missed the joke Exactly. But the thing is, that's doable. That's the first stage in, and it would remove some of the trust based as aspects like the people who are trusted their parties would probably see themselves mecha mechanized out because you'd get a feature for it. But yeah, I mean, contracts that you can put up that have got a fixed term payment date, you collateralize them. And if you default on it, boom, the contract closes and the person who's given the money gets the collateral. And then you can actually build tools through the API from that. Exactly. Um, that was why we call it low hanging fruit when we were interviewing Quant, because that's a feature that's pretty simple to make. And I think I think it was uh, Nawal that I was talking to when we were talking about features and structures and put, they were putting insurance and structures. It would also be nice if there was an actual player option to do something like an insurance contract, right? Yeah. I know Hex talked about creating uh, player made insurance. Oh yeah, he was uh, he he was basically preaching that for years and years. 
but I mean, if they can't do it, because like the, the shares option, you're right, it's broken, but I can't see how it can be fixed because you run into the same problem with corps that you do with players, the disposable. All you have to do is leave it and disband the corp. The shares are worthless and there's no recourse. But a contract with an item in exchange with a fixed but you term. Could make, you could make the shares back in some form. So there's a minimal nominal uh, value uh, in escrow, right? So you can't lose everything. So they have a, 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 a carried value, even if, yeah. if, it, if it loses a lot of its uh, um, uh, speculative value and it's ties to the actual corporation and liquidation. If the share itself has some sort of inherent ver value, I would say that you would have to buy when you did emissions and create a new shares. And you would have to set specifically how much do you want a nominal value to be, and then you would put that uh, an amount uh, equivalent to like 50% of that into escrow. And that could time out after, let's say, six months or something like that. Then you don't have to have that. You can get it back. But the, the, the point is that many of these what you would call added features, like just being able to attach the shares so you can have them in your hangar and you can put them in a contract. That would actually help a lot because then it could be put in the API. If uh, a share could only be in a contract alone, then pulling contract history and it would all of course be public, then pulling that public trade history would basically give you the prices of the shares. Yeah. I think the old system whereby the shares were part of the corp wallet and they were like a unique item that you can send to people and you can attach a value. It never got developed properly, but putting it back into escrow gives you some sort of... But then you don't have to do what was basically virtualizing it. Every single exchange uh, that's been created that was trying to use shares for anything, you basically gave all the shares to the person running the exchange so he could then virtualize it and you could go out of game and then trade it there and you would also get uh, uh, your accounts uh, uh, you got the payout of dividends and then you could withdraw it like it was kind of like a bank and this is a lot of hacking and and trying to get around the lacking features in game most of that i would prefer were handled in-house by ccp and we only tracked it from the outside as a third party. Now, do you think one of the main reasons we haven't seen a lot of, uh, over the years, a lot of progress in developing these types of uh, functionalities is because for the folks that want to do it, they're already doing it, but as third party tools and you know, completely yeah, devoid of the in-game connection. And, and the cost, right? The, uh, the time spent, if you have to do things like doing an audit, uh, doing third party uh, handling of assets, or, anything like that, if, if you're handling collateral, uh, if you're trying to manage underwriters of, of any of these things. There's just so much work that's being done uh, by hand, and that brings on Marsha's uh, uh, key uh, interest, which is that there's a difference between uh, managing budgets and, and, and doing these things, and then all the fancy, exotic, uh, products right i keep trying to point out a share is not an exotic product it's a very fucking simple and fundamental product that's yeah. very true but it's it's the number of shares that you generate and like how many so the difficulty with a physical item is you could tag it and say this is one of a thousand but then you go re-release your shares later on you're going to be increasing the value of shares in the background the physical item would change so it wouldn't work it's you need to kind of think about how does it sit in the database? How can it realistically be tracked? What happens if you create more shares? How, what about the change in share value? It's actually fairly complex. And the reason I'm suggesting this escrow system might, might work is because you put fixed limitations on it. So that you might say, right, a corp can create up to 10 million shares, but that's a maximum. Here is the number. Go, you know, go in, here's an input field. Decide right now how many you're gonna create. Well, Cypher is saying that shares are not worth anything. Well, that's exactly what they are in the real world. <laughs> There's no fucking difference. This is what I'm trying to explain to people when they keep talking about getting some sort of uh, NPC-driven uh, SEC uh, security commission thing. Uh, protect me, protect me, protect me. No, it's not, nothing like that in the, in the real world. It's, 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 it's done by people. And why should it be different in EVE? 
let it be done and handled by people. We just need the features. We don't need the NPC to actually manage this or protect us. A share is a share. It's based on trust. It's based on the internal value of a corporation. That's got to do with transparency. That's got to do with reporting. That ties back to the whole argument of, ME, uh, of the MER. It's the same with a fucking corporation. A corporation should have some ability to show their estimated NAV, estimated from uh, instant li uh, liquidation or from uh, uh, prognosis and expected uh, liquidation in the future. These things are basic. It's not rocket science. It's just that why are we getting a NAV calculation in EVE that's based on a player and not a corporation? I don't need to know what my player character is worth. I need to know what my corporation is worth. This is a fair point that Twitch is Twitch username for me is making in um, in the stream. Is saying you know you have got laws and real repercussions relating to shares. They're not they're not abstract. Yeah, because at the end of the day, I mean, you have to be able to have a robust enough system to prevent people going. Hey, I grabbed your money, but uh, I already moved it around, and I just buy a mess that tune that made that transaction. Come find me. You know what I mean? You, have, you, need, you need something but, but to But the point to is that. that, yes, there's laws, but contract law only takes you so far. It does not help you or guarantee any inherent value in a corporation or that the number that the shares is saying in the stock market is actually what the, what the company is worth. This can evaporate in like seconds Many corporations have no inherent value uh, once the, the the goodwill, the brand name, uh, the current spin. This is like Enron. And you're not protected from these things. You have to go on your gut feeling. You have to say, uh, it's like in the MD with the, with the bonds. I'm not very much of a fan of bonds, but you read the fucking business plan. Okay, does this make sense? Can I trust this person? Do a background check, ask an auditor, all these things we used to have them in the MD, and it's just the same if we want to if we want to see something like an actual live shares uh, market. You have to do your due diligence. No one is there to fucking save you. Yeah, that's sorry, true. we're all getting distracted here by um, Twitch chat. I think the I think Elange Four is trying to come into comms. Oh, Keep hang on, on. I'll give him access. I don't think I gave him that. It's very true what you're saying about enforcement. This is the bottom line, and it's the thing with loans being reputation-based. What do you do when people buy or master characters or use alts? You can't get around it unless you make them account-wide settings, which is just not going to happen. And it's the same with corps, and that's why shares are a problem, because they're attached to corps. They actually don't have to be. I mean, that's how it works in our world. But in this world, in this game, shares might need to be designed slightly differently yeah i mean for me for the group that i help manage that's that that's the biggest barrier is how, how can i you know offer the the most sensible protection for my guys so that they don't get burnt it doesn't exist it just doesn't exist yeah no it doesn't i mean you can go the whole hog and do 100 percent fully collateralized but at that point why are you even bother? bother exactly. Why are you even? You might as well, why are you asking yeah, you for money? Well, you might as well just do a private loan and put. There's your assets no incentive in for any of the clients if it's 100% collateralized loan. It makes no sense to me. It's like if there's no risk, why are you doing it? Who's doing it, and for what reason? The risk is part of the fun, though. To be fair, that's part yeah. Of there's why. fun and there's content. That's also why I like these things. I just hate that people want some sort of 100% uh, safety net somewhere. And CCP saved me. This is exactly like day one in EVE when suddenly people got started getting scammed and player killed and people were screaming and running to all the fucking uh, forums and saying, oh, save me, they're abusing me. No, they're playing the game. And it's the same in the meta markets. Do your due diligence, do the work, figure out who's actually worth investing in, who can actually prove this, who shows transparency. Is this a pump and dump? Is this Enron? Is it a Ponzi scheme? That's the whole point of a meta market. It's figuring these things out. That's why it's fun. I'm You're very low alarm. Hello, by the way. Um, 
one thing that I always noticed that was really funny with MD was that there's a mix of people who want to sponsor new players and they do treat it as a gamble. Like there's that bit of altruism there. They're like, yeah, we'll see. You know, you seem like you've put a good plan together. We want to make you the next Eve trillionaire. But on the back of it, they're like, you might be a scammer. <laughs> they're kind of like interrogating people and then being really, really nice to them. And, then... and it's a lot easier now, right, Marcia? Uh, if you go back before before 2008, nine, people were very anonymous. They didn't like being on cam. They didn't like being on voice, except with people they really trusted. Uh, they, they, many of them didn't go to any of the meets or stuff like that. So, so social capital and trust was a little bit more lacking. And it was only a very small bunch that actually did that. Uh, now it's a lot easier, right? And and valuation of things like brand name or say character. There's a limit to say if 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 you decided to start doing uh, some sort of uh, big investment stuff, right? There's a limit to how many times you can do that if people know your voice, uh, know your face, uh, know where to find you, and you just can't biomass. You can biomass all you like if if people still know who you are. I mean, are we at a point where markets are starting to be more sexy and be more? You know, oh front. yeah, it's it's coming and it's coming fast. It, it's just a matter of how much help are we going to get from CCP? How much are they going to uh, again bail out and run away because people are feature creeping on what we actually need? Because we do not need that much. We we need low low hanging fruit, very basic functionalities, and then maybe fixing some of the things that are still broken in the actual client, like the fact that if I ask my wallet to show you can actually do that on screen if i go to my corporate wallet and i try to do the account uh, key and say i want to see only cells it only shows finished cells not actual cells that are not completed yet this makes no sense can you hear me hey yes. Lars. um holding shares out of game is fraught with peril considering the recent share price stuff considering the recent uh, considering the recent gambling stuff uh, holding shares out of game is fraught with peril yeah no one is suggesting that or rather i'm actually not suggesting that i'm suggesting putting it back in the client giving us the feature so we track it outside of client and we have a virtualization of what's going on which is basically on our trust only do you think that ccp would you know, uh, just by virtue of like, a, like these dudes know more about this stuff than we do. Can we just give them the tools to figure it out on their own and kind of just be the, the very raw infrastructure for them to, to do the market stuff they want to do? Yeah, I, I don't think uh, we, you can put it like that because they, they, there's some sharp people in, in, in CCP devs now. It's just that the, the right CCP devs need to talk to the right players to come up with what I call minimum de deliverable, right? So it doesn't cost a fortune to create something that could create emerging markets. Yeah, I mean, I guess one of my main things I always kind of like, you know what, because I, I always thought this at least, you know, like, you know what the main, probably one of the main things that's really holding back like, like genuine market work is it's gonna give an option to really play Eve like AFK. Like really, just do market stuff and like uh, like like incredibly passive is making like uh, more scalable than what trading in markets already are currently, and it's in its its bare bone state right now. You know. Yeah, but you, if if you're talking about that, if you're talking about something outside of what is equivalent to well, the, the commodities market, right? Uh, everything in Eve is basically commodities, and everything is fungible. So, if you're talking about exotic products and and, and trading those. You still have to look what's under the hood and you're running a huge risk if you're trying to automate any of that botting your way out of it trying to play at afk sure there's going to be some people that might want to be interested in doing some service work and then sharing some of the profit if you make liquidity available for them but at some point they're going to say okay i'm just going to buy these people out because now i can do this by myself this is not a win button in any way on the contrary a lot of people are going to get burned, and that's the whole point of it. That's what makes it fun, just like creating fucking titans and then getting them blown up. Same thing. So you're saying this is an isk sink? No, 
we can't sink this. Well, we can in the form of if there's fees every single time and stuff like that. Sure, there's going to be an ISK sink and it could be, well, general, but it's not an ISK sink in general. I mean, they talk about in the in the real stock about the value of the total stock market going up and down. Um, uh, let's not bring in real life markets or anything like that. I'm just going to confuse everything to a degree that doesn't make sense because then we're going to start talking about things like inflation and uh, even more exotic products that we don't actually need yet. We are talking 10 years into the future before we have anything resembling current real economics. Well, to be fair, that's part of the problem is the parallels keep being drawn with real life and they don't actually, <laughs> they, they just don't match. Yeah, they need to start earlier. They need to go backwards saying, what is a bank in the age of the Templar? What is the uh, the first bond markets? What's the first shares, first uh, project-based shares from uh, from London and, and Amsterdam? How did that work? That's it's the functionality we need first. We don't need extremely technical stuff that needs quant level PhD degrees. We just need the basic fundamental tools. Yeah, but you, you, you kind of, you just touched on it there because you mentioned Templars and modern stock markets. And actually, I think we're running three parallel systems. Like older systems didn't even involve currency. They were barter and trade. So your main economic units would be things like silk and furs. And actually, if you look at some of the T2 materials, they fall into that category. And then if you look at the more advanced stuff like these stock markets or Plex, Plex has parallels with the gold market or the silver market. They're all different types of finance systems from different periods of history. And they're being put into a futuristic game that doesn't have the rules, the legislation that we've put in place to manage them. So when you, you keep talking about Wild West type economics and scammers and sort of, uh, what did you say, like cartels, because that's kind of what we have, right? And yeah, we need yeah. the first we need the first things to then figure out how can we then by it's ourselves and as players figure out how to politicize and legislate and do oversight and do audits. And right now, audits today is so easy compared to what it was in 08 and 09, right? Now it's just a pull of uh, the ESI. It takes no time, you have pretty much full transparency. You can sort and de decide exactly what you want to show. You can even do it uh, through a third party that can then further obfuscate some of the information you do not want to share. So it, it's pretty much an open and shut case now uh, compared to in the early days. It's not quite. I mean, this is what I'm saying. I think there are multiple systems running in parallel that don't match and we're trying to <laughs> look at them from a modern viewpoint and they just don't match any of them it's unique so you need to kind of separate out the different types of items and trades that are taking place and then state where they are and what the interactions are like you just said this perfect transparency you go externally pull out all the data for a region and then give me a breakdown for a corp in pl their finances you can't do it sorry but it's not as transparent not as you that, think that, that a corp say in pl can decide to say we want to run this as a shared based public or these partially publicly owned corporation we will share uh quarterly reports that's going to be handled by uh, an esi pool it's going to tell you what our assets are not necessarily where but it's going to tell you exactly what assets we have how much morphine have we been stockpiling how many structures have we built how many ships have we lost <laughs> and you're going to have to show all these in some simplified way. We have to cut the things down to something that can be managed by a game so it does not feel like this massive chore. So we don't have to all become goons to do these things. This is about barrier of entry, and that barrier of entry needs to come down. Some will say, yeah, but then goons are going to have the same advantage. Yes, but again, then the value of time is more equal. Right now it's not, because the effectiveness of an hour of work in Goons is a lot better than anyone in any other group. So basically we need to be at a place where 
more judicial use of our time is the bigger uh, variable versus just throwing bodies at a problem. Yeah, and, and, and there needs to be more equality in, in how to create these machines uh, organizational wise, right? So it becomes easier to, to manage things. It, it, if you go back and look at it, and I think that Marsha will agree with me, something like managing posses and post fuel, right? Horrible, horrible job. And it was done by specific people that actually could do that without well, puking and wanting to hang themselves. Things like that needs to be easier. This is why I'm also supporting something like an interbus system, not for everything, not for high-end product, but for things that currently, no one wants to ship titanium, right? No one wants to ship fuel. Stuff like that could actually be handled by a uh, system that was maybe delayed, maybe could be aggressed against, so say AI-based, uh, you could have the actual uh, freighters or uh, industrial ships going into space, moving in space. If they get shot, then you actually don't get your package. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's 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 crazy, man. I mean, we got to take, we kind of have to sit back a little bit and see where CCP takes it. I'm just glad that, the, I'm just glad that there's a conversation, to be absolutely honest with you, because <laughs> no one's ever said anything, you know. Like, the biggest draw to, the, the biggest and it's a shame that it's not really used as a as a as an upfront selling point to to get involved with Eve Online. Is the the market's a very near realistic uh, as far as video games are concerned, the way the economy works because it's 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 tough to sell that. You know, it really is. as a video game, it's tough to sell that. I think the interesting thing is that this would never have have come up again in a way that would be taken serious if it had not been for things like uh, um, goons breaking the game structures being rolled out and then people like Aerith actually screaming about this and making people aware that there's a game that's beyond what mm, you would normally look at in E. I don't, know, I don't know if you, like, I wouldn't go too far with goons with their industry side because they've always had it but they were virtually penniless when they were in syndicate after they were robbed and that was not that long ago from a long-term point of view they've reaped the rewards of um the tech and holding the north for a long time and they've reaped the rewards of being in the south and optimizing it but the actual change towards markets might actually be coming from ccp and you highlighted that on that tis interview where you had what's his name what was the developer called the fit one Quant? Quant, um, <laughs> he actually said, and I thought it was quite interesting because I only got about 45 minutes into the interview, but he said at one point he'd taken over the econ reports and he was now producing them via database queries that saved a lot of man hours. But he said it wasn't just a struggle to release these externally. There was a discussion internally and he it's an ongoing discussion. And his argument seemed to be that he thinks that the players can take this raw data and do more with it than CCP can. And he kind of, in a way, said those old econ reports were a bit of a waste of time because they were late, they spent too long on the analysis, it took too many man hours, and I agree with all of that. But the interesting point is that he's still engaged in discussion internally with people about what data to release. And this is the bit that perhaps is why this is becoming more prominent, is that he's taking more of an active role in releasing data and engaging with people who are interested in this yeah and and the fact that it is really such an important and vital part of what makes it different and i think if they don't keep that in the game if if they move to well, i keep calling it easy mode eve then what's going to keep me here seriously i i don't see what the value is then i don't know if you remember but when dr i always call him dr dr Agge, produced those reports, the people on MD shredded it. Like, the, they were not well-received reports. Is um, it because they were not accurate? Um, it was because the, the narrative behind them was selective. So they had a habit of zoning in on specific things, but simultaneously missing out on things that 
speculators were already aware of. So they'd release a report three months later and something massive would be happening in the market. And people would be like, well, what the hell was the point of looking at that? Yeah, you can kind of say that a lot of it was hopelessly outdated, right? And, yeah. And the academic. Academic being the point, it was, and that came up in the interview as well. He is now an academic and they came across as academic texts. And I'm not being funny, but I've read undergrad academic texts and this was not particularly good. I thought it was <laughs> it was okay, but it was not brilliant. And it was a little bit rushed, right? And it, yeah. it had the feeling that it was understaffed and had to be done on a deadline that uh, might not have been too beneficial for it the ones across as people who had not graduated. Yeah, and a lot of uh, the E player base, as you said, picked it apart because they'd already done much of this uh, with data and predictions and stuff like that. So they they were kind of ahead of the curve. Uh, of the actual in-house team, which is why I agree with Quant. Release it to the public, m make it available in a way that, uh, well, similar to uh, the quarterly report, but uh, where you get it on a delay and then you get the monthly that is not perfect knowledge. A little bit like uh, the fog of war that's already in place in the game geographically, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know, man, it's just, I, I really hope that we get to a point where this stuff just, just gets more attention, you know, but part of me also, it's it's kind of, it's kind of like a matter of pride, you know, like, like A, I, I, I ran that part of the game with, in the current state that it is, like, not easy mode, so, it's one, you know what I mean, it's, it's to, to, to experience the market side of EVE, in the future when it's easier i don't know if people are going to be able to derive as much enjoyment out of it but that's know. always that, that's always a point is if you dump something down do you do you remove certain elements and for higher level players probably but actually the higher level players will take advantage of it as well so i i don't really see that no it's just if, if you make Everyone that's been doing these strange things unemployed, like there's been many of these things where CCP has done something and then a job in E basically became obsolete within a day, right? Um, then you're taking out a lot of the flavor because that's really what the whole, in my opinion, what the PVP is all about. The fact that not everyone wants to do uh, complicated uh, jobs, but if you just automate all of that or make it the, uh, uh, less complicated, then you don't need these people to do this. You're lo losing all the spreadsheet warriors. They don't have a game anymore. Um, and I think that's kind of a major loss. Yeah, from a personal point of view, like the third party sales, I can see Citadels, for example, and the way that they just removed that market overnight. But yeah, I don't... Tripper is uh, unemployed now. He, yeah, but, his but... work is uh, worthless. I know, but to be fair, there were never enough third parties available. It cost a lot of money, it took a lot of their time, and it was a pain in the ass, and it could go wrong. So, like, automating it didn't completely kill it off. Yeah, like there's Otto saying in chat, it still exists. Yeah, but it's still the fact that CCP has signed a way to minimize the strain and the value of that work. And Yes, I, I agree with the changes. I'm, I'm not saying that they should not have been made. I'm just saying that when CCP does that, they need to consider, is is this worth it? Is, is the added value of what is created worth it? Isn't there potentially some better way to resolve these things than uh, making it too easy? No. <laughs> Well, because it, it's, it's it the same works. with the with with the uh, upcoming uh, collateralized uh, loan thing, right? I am very much for that development, except what about the player's role and how is that going to be utilized? Uh, because now everyone wants to potentially start being a banker or a pawn shop owner or whatever you want to call it. Um, then the competition is going to be fierce and there's going to be a lot of potential scammers in there, right? Well, that's uh, I mean, that's that's really the barrier that you got to cross, right? I mean, are you opening Pandora's box by making this 
activity more available to everyone when previously it kind of already was, but you had to be like in the right social circles to do it. Well, yeah, that's a very good point. These third parties, they had to rep farm for a long time and establish a reputation, talk to people, maintain this facade, this persona. And it was a lot of work, but there's only a tiny handful of them. So if, in a sense, that was an oligarchy that you could say is unfair. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, I agree that the, the market has been liberated. I'm, I'm just saying that, that there's a limit to how many things you can, uh, if you make too many uh, uh, of those meta-like uh, aspects of the game obsolete, there is no need for any of the players to interact on a personal level. They can just interact with the client, and that takes away some of the flavor of the game. Yeah. It does, but it's it's st it was still a closed niche. It was still a closed cl club, and yes, they had to do a lot of work to get there. But that doesn't mean that it's better than it being <laughs> slightly more accessible. Oh, I, as I said, I, I do agree. In 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 this specific case, I'm just saying, how much more are they going to give us a a version of that is. Uh, making all that meta stuff obsolete, right? Uh, if they just implement a fully functional and protected uh, uh, um, stock exchange that's just used in game and you have to, I don't know, plex to actually get it injected into that stock exchange. Is this a good solution? Does that inspire players to actually take part in it if they don't have to build anything? Yeah, I mean, you have to kind of think about who's, you know, the types of players that are coming into the game or as players develop into the game after a few weeks, months, even years. Uh, is that kind of gameplay something that they would progress into, you know? Uh, and does that take away time that they, limited time that they, you know, that they otherwise could be just... Um, ratting or you know uh participating in small game pvp or just pvp in general you know if it's too difficult to do and it takes up too much of their time are they kind of you know uh putting aside the other part the more active parts of the game in lieu of the big meta market stuff i'm all for removing unwanted and unneeded complexity i just think that you have to be very careful what you remove whether something is complicated because it's benefiting a special niche or branch of Eve, or whether it's just complexity that's not serving any real purpose. The amount of ammo that we have in game is potentially retarded. We, I don't think we need that. But something like the fact that the balance of the cost of, of ammo is totally skewed, that it's way too cheap, uh, just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, that's true, man. Like. <laughs> when I'm rolling around in the mid massage ship and I got way too much ammo, that's a problem. <laughs> I mean, wait, but is that is that is that complexity kind of part of the flavor though? I mean, sometimes it feels like that. But you're right. There, you know, how do you distinguish between like this is just needlessly like laborious, like for no reason. It's just it just is. Like I mean, PI, like for fuck's sake, PI, holy shit. Why does why, why is PI like this after so many years already? Holy shit! Uh, PI is just cancer because it's such a click fest and it's a horrible it is, it's game interface and it's not funny. It's something that you have to sit down and then do all the foo and set it up and then hope uh, to God that it doesn't get taken over by some poco entity, whatever. It's just so dumb and I was so hyped when it was announced and I thought that it would be something awesome like I don't know a mini farm wheel or something. It just ended up being uh, a stupid, I don't know, uh, connector. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What, what yeah, game, man, yeah, you, yeah. You to compare it to? It's like, it, it's one of those stupid tube games where you have to com connect something and, and then just walk away. It's like, oh. Terrible, basically. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a terrible terrible. game. Um, there's Otto in uh, Twitch chat who yeah, is... Yeah, he should join us. Yeah, yeah, can you... Do oh, you Otto, mind come on in. Do you mind giving him the link? I don't want to because it's your Discord. Um, he's saying he's a third party and he's. I think he's going to give us the counter argument, which would be interesting. I hope he's not too irate. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, like, like I'll be honest, like, 
like I'm not even like managing money anymore to be honest with you I'm, 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 I'm organizing people for them to manage each other's money that's, that's all I'm doing I sucked all my PI skills out because I just was so enraged at the fact that they never seemed to be even interested on iterating on it or remaking it or making it fun well so, how could they make how could they add more interaction with it short of making it like genuinely active like like in space not in planet view active you know what i mean well i would make it a mini game pretty much no oh, sure yeah so take from the games that we already know have a lot of players that are interested in something like farm will or managing uh things like what's it called the one for um uh, the one for Fallout 4. I've actually never played it. <laughs> Fallout Shelter, right? Oh, actually, you know, yeah, Shelter sounds pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's I get you, something like that. games like that that you could actually do something in, and, and, and something like Fallout Shelter already runs when you're not there. It just doesn't run as effectively, and you don't get the same benefit. You could, don't get the bonus missions and stuff like that. So you could have a similar game design around PI in some way, and then I would like to see... Uh, the baseline is actually being put into uh, PI in some form. So you put in uh, uh, acolytes and then you upgrade them and you buy slaves and you can put them through and then you can... Basically what was in the uh, April Fool's thing where you put, uh, what was it? 250 male slaves and 250 female slaves and then hollow reels and a scientist and on the other end you got uh, exotic dancers. That's a good way to eat up some NPC items. It's just funny, uh, and it, it could develop into, and then trying to see which of these things are then uh, things that you need to fuel a station or increase their index or decrease their index, whatever. All these things could be tied together so that you would have this complicated uh, added uh, economic aspect that couldn't necessarily be gained because it was all based on what players decided to do, and there was no fucking cookie cutter win setup. Well, I guess they could also go the other side of the spectrum and make it even more passive and just a set it and forget it type thing. I don't know if there's any value in going that route, to be honest. Uh, especially as uh, you know, if if a sh like a lot of volume of, of products start hitting the market based on it being more, much more passive, much more easy to manage as it is now. But ease of management, I mean, it really couldn't help. It, I mean, it really couldn't hurt to just. Because it's so counterintuitive when you're setting that whole thing up. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, you, you, it, it's a separate system unto itself. I was just adding Cypher. Did Otto get in here? I'm sending him the link right now. I think he's trying to join there. How long did you have scheduled for the show? We have a pass an hour. Uh, wow. 60 minutes. So we're about... 30 minutes past the mark, but yeah. <laughs> I just, I just like looked and thought, ah. Well, it's good numbers for a first show. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Oh man, I can't send. Dang. I mean, it was a cool format. I and mean, it's, you know, we kind of just, we had, we had like literally one topic and it just branched, like branched out everywhere. It was cool, man. It is very difficult with these because they do link into so many other topics. Tangents everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Oh, Otto! If you um, follow Matterall when he's doing his show, he has a set format. And it's I think it's essential when you've been doing it for a bit. Yeah, he's very strict with that stuff. <laughs> Which is good, well, though. Like, it actually is good. Yeah, it's all right. The back chat's fine. <laughs> the, the... Mm. People in channel are chatting away as well. Hello, Otto. Hey, Otto. Long time no see, man. Are you voice now? Well, yeah. I mean, man, like I don't know. Like I'm, I'm definitely burnt out on the market stuff. That's why I'm, I'm more of a community manager of sorts. <laughs> Like, no, I'm not, I'm not handling any of y'all's money. No, no, give it to that guy. One of the things that, that people also miss uh, quite often when they try to do the market is that they tend to not focus on service, right? So they're not actually trying to build a, a mini hub. They're not trying to service any industrialists or even their own business. 
it's like everyone wants to do every step of the chain themselves and they don't understand that convenience is actually service and that can make you a lot of money but it needs a little bit of prepping and setting up and then you need to figure out where are your customers which is why i loved what hex was trying to do with his uh, uh insisting on doing a business plan like model for bonds i think he should have taken it further and i was trying to do that with the with the lounge but um, to, to actually say, what is it that your added value is? What are you trying to do with your business? How are you going to run it? Where's your margins? What's the uh, the, the need uh, for in, uh, initial uh, liquidity? All these things, right? Yeah. That was one. That was one of the problems with a lot of the early bonds was not that it was that they didn't stand up to scrutiny because the people that were running them didn't actually need the ISK couldn't demonstrate a track record of making ISK and wanted to do it as a hobby kind of thing. Yeah. He was, he was very much a hobbyist. Yeah, you see that a lot too. Now, I, I didn't, it took me a while to even get to that point there myself where I'm doing this literally for fun. I'm managing in the over 100 billion ISK of, of investments, like genuinely for fun. But yeah. I just, it's, it's, it's hard to like, it's hard to make people understand that, or like, no, I'm, su I'm super serious, guys. I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to scam you. You know what I mean? Because then it's kind of like this reverse social barrier you're overcoming just to prove that you actually are genuinely doing this because you want to do it, and it's not a scam. It's like, yeah, it's too many barriers. I invested um, in the first year that I played for fun, just to like see whether the 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 fail or not. And most of the time they were okay, but on the one scam that was Titans for You, I actually found it really funny. I think I was the only person who did. Yeah, I mean, like right now, you know, like when I, it was such, it was such a relief, you know, when I paid everyone back, like, oh, I'm free. <laughs> I'm now, yeah. now I can really work on like what I thought at the time was. Uh, like a higher calling is all right now it can't be about me anymore what if i work to get you know the people with the money and the people who want to do the effort get them together because they can make so much more money together versus i alone could ever do you know which is like right now within our group i mean there's about 42 billion isk in uh active money in play right now and people are people are getting returns much higher than i could ever offer honestly on a weekly basis so i'm pretty happy about that i think it was what i i don't know if i was telling you earlier but it's the whole thing of uh, there's so much liquid is running around in eve but it's mo mostly in big organizations that you have a proper system to actually plow them back in into making more money uh the whole thing that the well, Aerith uh, was saying today that he's using money to make money. And this is a well-known fact. That's how you do it. But that option is not open to everyone. And that's kind of what's been missing. But you need those small tools and those people interested in those things. And then you have to kind of have CCP support a more mature market that has proper bottlenecks, proper scarcity, uh, proper difference in and, and variation and distribution of, of, of different types of wealth and assets. If that does not exist, there is no market. If everyone can just plant banana trees and, and orange trees and apple trees, they have no reason to trade. This is pretty much what is on page one in a finance 101 book, right? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of like the, the a story that never, that never, that always gets repeated, right? Like, what do I trade in? Like, bro, it's not like, like, and I, and I keep, and I tell people to, and it sounds contrary too, is like, I, I tell them like, uh, don't worry about making money. Fix up your process. If you have a good process, the money will be there. I, I promise you, <laughs> you, you have to fix up your process, man. You have to understand like kind of the picture and, and have a, a reasonable process to actually manage that. The, the money kind of just, it just shows up. Also, could you uh, voice up? Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I've been for ages, but you guys have been like going for like ages, and I just didn't want to interrupt. No, please do. We want to. We want the counter argument because, well, I think we're both a little bit in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, like the 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 thing about third parties is that, um, like, everyone, like, I know a lot of people like salty at third parties, right? Because they're like, oh, they're never online or anything like that, All right? And 
while certain, to a certain extent that is true, like we all do have lives and stuff. Um, what am I the judge? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, you do have a little bit of the same uh, voice and accent as the judge. Uh, ironically, judge lives about an hour and a half away from me. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. <laughs> Understandable then. There you have it. Um, anyway, so, um, and, and like, while I do get that, that, uh, that um, aspect of the point of view is that um, at the same time, there, you know, until, I say like through all of last year, for example, um, when there wasn't a lot of keep stars and there was uh, still the need for third parties to transfer supers. Um, the third parties were there. There were five of us. There was like me. Um, I'm trying not to call them all by their real names because I know them all. Um, there was me, Kriba, Grendel, Rocket X, and Wyrox. Right now, granted, Darkness went turbo and there's an entire. Uh, story behind that um but those five were still all reasonably active if you if you shot me an email and it wasn't at three o'clock in the morning i would do a super transport for you um so i always find like that argument of like you know um and the, there's the the third party channels in game there was all the players individual channels um and while it was a black art to sort of i don't want to say necessarily find one um the the information was there for those who wanted it. Yeah. Um, I, didn't, it, I didn't mean it as an insult, by the way. No, uh, no, 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 no. I, just... deal, I had dealings with Grendel and uh, Kraber. I sold Kraber supers when I was building them. And I had dealings with Grendel. He oversaw my loan. So, But it's just just go back to how many names you listed to deal Five with the whole, the whole player base. Yeah, and then yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't cover the other aspects of uh, third-party services that we were talking about with financial stuff with uh holding huge collateral it, it, you want you need more if you want the market to grow and we i think we actually did reach uh, reach a point where it was extremely difficult to get people like auditors to actually go in check people's business check their api write up uh, an audit report and, and all these things that was happening a lot in in 2008 mm -hmm. 9 uh, and 10. Uh, people were really pushed and pressured and I remember that Shah actually said, I don't want to do this anymore because this is just too much work. It's not worth it and it's not fun. Well, and to be, to be fair, that, that ties back to the, the, the tool <laughs> argument, right? That's kind of what I was trying to say. The auditor questioned something different, but we just interrupted him, so I let him finish because he spent ages trying to get on comms. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Um, so then, like, for anyone that, like, and this is 100% this is my advice, and this is the advice that was given to me. Um, by Grendel and by Kribble. Um, is it if you want to be a third party, make a make a thread, post on the forums, spam the fuck out of it, and uh, I don't know if I can swear on the channel. I'm sorry if I can't. Um, spam the hell out of it, all right? And maybe you'll make it. Maybe your reputation is good enough to to sort of get over that hump. And like if you if you go look at my thread, the first page is like what. Uh, probably all of my friends going, yeah, Otto's a good bloke, right? Um, then after that, it's probably a page of me bumping the crap out of it. And then after that, it's the point where you sort of get over that hurdle of people like, oh, I don't know, this is sketchy, or like, I don't know who you are. Um, and then that's when my transfer started going. And I transferred like what, a couple, I think it's like two or three trillion. I stopped updating it because it just became a pain in the ass to keep updating. Um, but I know how much I transferred and I still transfer stuff. Like it's transferring citadels. There's holding money for people. Um, people pay me to buy supers for them. Um, and you, you sort of like, while the whole third party, um, like role in the traditional sense of, I watch two people literally transfer supers, um, is, uh, is dead, right? That's totally dead. And I'm fine with that. That was a complete pain in the ass. It took like up to two hours for, for a super transfer to go down um and it, it was just me sitting there like literally copying and pasting from a word document of what they had to do um and the thing is that like now like people will be like oh i want to buy an avatar right and i'm like okay then they're like i want to buy it off contract but i don't want to get scammed and i'm like okay well like if you give me like 75 bills to buy you an avatar and 500 million 
is Epitax. I'll do it for you. And people pay me to do that now um, or to find them cheap supers or things like that. So um, the role has changed, but it's not dead because of um, all of those things. No, no. Um, and of course, it, uh, if you want to do it, as you point out, you need to be willing to actually grow the business. You need to do the footwork. You need to yeah, figure out exactly. how do you want to get into this? You're not going to be trading uh, Titans from day one. Start smaller. Figure out what you can actually do on a smaller scale, right? Yeah, for sure. Like um, the first, the first transfer I did was of a class two wormhole for like two hundred mil or something, and and that's uh, you know, and you know, I'm like, oh, this sucks. But then, like, eventually, like after, like, and here's the thing as well is that there's a point, right, where most third parties quit. Right, and it's like literally probably like one more one month before they actually make it, and they're like, I'm gonna just like I'm gonna do this for a year, and they're like, all right, I've transferred like one super in a year, and like nobody contacts me for anything. I must admit, I, the third parties that I remember are the failed ones, not the ones the success. Obviously, you know the successful ones, but you remember seeing the failed ones putting the thread up and getting all the friends to bump it, and then like, no, this was actually a scam, and they just. The thread just evolved into like a smack fight that was really funny so you actually remember all the failed third parties better than you do the successful ones yeah that's, that's pretty yeah, the thing with, with ccp right um ccp uh is so uh, interested in these big stories about big scams and big failures of big banks and stuff like that but there's no real telling of the good stories and where do you get those right where do you get otto's story that should be somewhere so people can read. This is how you actually do it if you want to get into this and want to stay legit and don't want to burn out and don't want to have to cut and run. Yeah, the um, the interesting, there's like so many interesting stories as well about how like everyone uh, says like, you know, PL is super untrustworthy and stuff like that. There was a point in time where like, I'm not sure how active Cooper and Wyrox are at the moment, but like the only two active real third parties in the game or at one point at the start of the year were both in PL. Um, there was a point where four of the six all had characters in PL um, and whatnot. So like it's it's super interesting to like look at all the stories behind the behind the scenes and some of the the slightly more questionable stories that go around that like amongst the third parties and like we we I have like a chat channel with Rocket and like I have one with um, Grendel and I have one with uh, a few other people as well. We just sit in there and like laugh at all the funny scams that people try and pull over us and, and stuff like that. And it's like, mate, I've like third party, like, you know, what, 50, 100 super carriers or something. I've seen it all. Nothing is that new. And it's, but it's still fun to like laugh at. Yeah, I mean, in the future, moving forward with the development of, you know, more market stuff, more tools at the individual player level, I mean, I don't think we're really going to find ourselves in a point where we don't, we'll, we will never need a third party. Because certain things just, you, you need another set of eyes just to make sure it's legit, <laughs> to protect yourself, you know what I mean, from making these purchases. I think what I'm, what I'm basically asking for is something that's a little bit more up to date and and modern than old forums that makes me feel like i'm still playing in 2004. yeah what do you what like what do you want like what's the dream like is it you know like essentially like ebay no I, i'm uh, just it's it's what i pointed out earlier uh, marcia will not be able to do like a total uh serial scam artist thing if 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 she puts her name out there, uses her main, the main has a value. Same with uh, yourself, right? You, you, you could, of course, uh, try to claim that you're the judge, but it, you can't just biomass and, and your identity and your brand value and all these things. That's kind of the, the, the thing that, that people need to build when they rep grind. And that needs to be taken out of the anonymity of not being available. I'm not saying they should dox themselves. I'm just saying, if you are hiding and the only thing that, that exists of you is a six months old character, a lot of alts and uh, a few forum posts, then there's no credible uh, value to that character. You shouldn't trust them with any money in any way or form, right? Yeah, but we did that for fun for like new starters who appeared genuine and committed and engaged in MD. So 
uncollateralized loans did actually happen. And to be fair, I need to point out, I still owe Grendel 60 billion on one of my loans for a loan. Yeah, like my whole oh, business okay, model was uncollateralized okay. loans. I was, you know, fuck man, I could have walked away with so much money. <laughs> but I didn't, you know? <laughs> Hey, like, I, like, it's just, it's crazy, it's crazy, like, it's, sometimes you just get lucky, and, but you do need, need, well, you need to get lucky in the beginning and just catch a break, and it just, it just steamrolls on itself. Well, if you do it long enough, eventually you, you might, you might be in a position where you have alliance-like money hanging mm. around in your wallet. <laughs> yeah. Then you can run away with a big score, and right. then you can uh, be mentioned in the news. But the, the think... interesting... The, the super interesting question that comes around is like, what number is, is the <laughs> yes. number? What's the number, right? What's the number? What, what, what's your price? What's when do you when do you cash in? I could never I find had, the number. Well, like that's the thing is like the most I've ever had was probably eight hundred billion of other people's assets in cash and whatnot on Holy my account. Shit. And like, and I thought about it, and I'm like. If I was going to do it, this is probably the time, but obviously didn't because there's not a whole huge thread about how I, uh, you know, scammed a whole bunch of people. But like, you know, I had that much money and I'm just like, I could go now and I'd have 800 billion and that'd be a, a nice, like, sort of golden parachute for the end of the third parties. But, um, you know, like, what's the, that's the thing is that, like, it's my reputation and, like, you can't replace that. Like, to replace that would cost me 800 billion. To like unfuck that over, yeah. It was... yeah and, and how do you value the social capital and all the time invested in the game, right? All the the money you've thrown at CCP, all the, the the name value of your identity that you would have to rebuild all of that again. So it's a very very difficult balance to figure out what is your number. And personally, I can't really find it because I I think okay, how much would someone have to pay me? to get rid of all that stuff and the fact that I get called by my in-game name almost more frequently than my real name. How do you put a price tag on that? Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I, couldn't, I could never find my price because I found more value in just playing the numbers game. Like, I, I genuinely found value in just playing that part of the game and actually connect, creating and, and nurturing those social connections. That was more value, more valuable to me than the is like because there were weeks where like I wasn't making that much and I, w I need to be able to communicate that to my investors and they were totally cool with it. So, you know, it was it's a relationship building, and then well, the I got a kick out of that. The interesting thing is, a lot of the bigger scams were not about they were they didn't start out as scams. The people involved did build up the relationships. They were genuine, and then they burnt out because it was too much work. Yeah, no, I was I was there, man. I was the burnout was real, man, and that, that's but yeah. that's where I just sacked up and said, you know what, I I need to actually pay everyone back, and uh, and, and luckily I was running for the CSM. I was like, oh, the stars have aligned. <laughs> Let me drop everything. <laughs> Holy shit! It makes the stories a little bit less fun when you know that most of the uh, the big ones are actually burnout and giving the wrong people access at the wrong time. Yeah, it's anticlimactic. Or, it happens. Uh, people screwing up their corp roles. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. That is such a big one. Oops. Did I give him access to that wallet? That was not intended. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. I mean, we're, we're, we're the same way. What was the story with, with eBank that they... It was that they actually had the shares in... Uh, the corporation uh, wallet. So, who was it that took all of it? Anyway, e no, yeah, e bank. Uh, Riddick. Yeah, Riddick. Uh, Riddick uh, basically just had access to take out all the shares, which was never intended. But it was just an oversight. It's why it's so important that because no, that many was, of the no. features are so obscure that if you don't know and don't have it in your whole procedure and writing your plan on how you're compartmentalizing and making sure that everything is right in, in the safety No, that was, but that was, that was T for you. That was bad, bad, bad Bobby. When they did a share transfer and he knew there was a mechanic that I think they'd created some extra shares and the directors that held the shares were offline. Riddick just ran. He took the money and ran. Yeah, and cashed in an RMT. Yeah, that was a different... 
I mean, his his justification for it was that his child was disabled and he needed to pay his mortgage. And I mean, it hit the news. And it didn't hit it in a bad way. It brought people in because people want to know what is, what this, is game? this game about? Yeah. Yeah. Why can you do this in a game? It was not bad press at the time. It was good press. Yeah, and it, it, the bad stories are always also a good uh, story for CCP because people get interested. But it's just, I would like to see some of the, mm, not the scam stories hit the news in some way because I think they, they are just as interesting. Yeah. yeah. Plex for like good. Like Trevor, right? Like Plex for good. Like uh, some, uh, so, uh, now, uh, BSAC stock exchanges closed down, but they had a long run with a lot of uh, corporations actually paying out above initial investment. That, by definition, to me, makes it not a scam. Yeah, something like big. Um, you always see Kreber interviewed when it comes to economy, but actually, he's not really. I mean, he was a third party, but he didn't get into it in the way that a lot of people in MD did. I probably prefer to see Grendel interviewed. Because I think he yeah. had a bit of a wider spread. Um, and Cody, right? Yeah. I think that's a pretty good note to start uh, doing some shout outs and uh, call it a day. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm surprised we lasted this long. We were just like blasting back and forth, back and forth, man. That was cool. Anyone have some shout outs they want to give out? Yeah, now's the time. Also. Uh... Can I, can I shout out to my mother? Because it's actually Mother's Day in Australia. Oh, cool, man. Oh, bless. I'm going to shout out my mum, who doesn't know I play Eve anymore because she thinks that it's bad for me, but whatever. We won't tell her. <laughs> Marsha? Uh, I'll shout out my mum as well, because um, <laughs> I was watching um, Talking in Stations on the laptop in the kitchen with her at her house today while I was cooking. And she was like, I just don't understand all this. Can you explain it? But she just kept laughing uncontrollably at the expressions on people's faces in street. You have to see if you can't get her to actually play Eve. So yeah, we're, we're getting an, a new trend of uh, Eve Grand and Moms and Mrs. Uh, Big Country uh, coming and playing Eve. She's going to get some tutoring. And yeah, it's a whole new segment. It's uh, the Grey Pound. <laughs> yep. Oh man, I guess my only shout out is uh, for uh, my Alliance Wrecking Machine. Uh, man, did two Citadel Ops this morning, so that was pretty cool. Uh, almost a year in, and we're still doing like the Citadel high sec bashing thing, man. We're not. <laughs> it's uh, I guess it's not a fluke. We're we're, we're moving on with that stuff. Um, but this is, and the only the, for me, it's, it's it's such a big deal because I can't remember the last time I stayed in one group this long to be honest I've always been that vagabond kind of just going core popping for reasons <laughs> what core what core power alliance are you in? oh uh, I mean uh, wrecking machine basically uh, all we do is kill citadels and empire that's really our, that's our bag that's it uh, we're operating out of domain right now uh, last month we were actually in the forge um, but we're uh -oh. We were, dude. There was a lot of like easy pickings in the forge. Lots, lots. Perfect transition to uh, a citadel owner in the forge. Veronica, do you want to do some shout outs before we close? Oh, I wasn't here the whole time. Nah. <laughs> so, I didn't you know. Were you were hiding. Yeah, I was making dinner. Just shout out to your mom, man, and everyone will think you're awesome. Yeah, uh, it'll be Mother's Day tomorrow, so. Yeah, buddy. It's a good call. I'm not going to shout out to my mom. I'm going to ask people to uh, check out the new Guardian and uh, come back next week. I'm sure there will be some interesting stuff in the news that we can shoot the breeze about. Yeah, it's a great format. Uh, if we can keep up with uh, keeping the comms open and folks can jump in, man, it's just... We'll be better. We'll, we'll do better. More practice and stuff. Well, thank you everybody for coming and yeah, join comms or if you have something to speak about, speak to Caleb or Rodin beforehand and then, you know, come in. Yeah, we can set up uh, set up all the supporting links and whatnot just to make it, you know, more easily digestible for everyone. Cool. Well, that's really all uh, we got. And uh, well, thank you very much for everyone. I uh, really appreciate it. Great turnout for a first, you know, like a... Uh, 
uh, first episode, and uh, I'll definitely besides the you know uh, our appearance in Twitch, well, I'll al I'll also uh, put this in uh, event. Probably not my channel, but maybe even T's YouTube channel. But we'll see. I'm not sure if I can double post that. I don't think so. We'll start posting everywhere and uh, poking more to uh, make sure that everyone sees it. This was our soft launch, and uh, thanks to everyone showing up. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. We'll see you again next week. Later, guys. We're clear. <laughs>